Namaste and Vanakam and welcome to A Taste of South India. Uh, today we're going to be making a ve vegetable curry that is generally called mixed vegetable curry. The ingredients of this curry are potatoes, sliced onion, yams or otherwise known as madumbis, cauliflower, brinjal. Now you'll notice that I've sprinkled turmeric on the brinjal. That is so that it doesn't discolor. Gem squash, green bananas. Again, you'll notice that I have sprinkled some turmeric on the green banana and that's to prevent discoloration as well. And of course, nothing makes a curry uh, taste better than our spices. And the spices that we're going to be using will be some garam masala, jeera powder, dhania powder, chili powder, turmeric, salt, and of course chopped dhania to add at the end, and of course our ginger and garlic. For most curries you will find your onions need to be finely chopped, but for this curry our onions can be cut in, big, in long slices, and that's what we're doing here. Now I think my pot is hot enough, and I'm going to put some oil in. I'm using normal vegetable oil. If you want to be very naughty, you can cook this curry in ghee. Uh, it will be very, very rich. Uh, but the traditional way is with oil. Put in some of my curry leaves into the pot. Break in some red dry chilies. And now we're going to add our onions in there. Give that a stir. You can hear the sizzle, and that tells you that our oil is nice and hot. Putting the potatoes in. And we're going to give that a stir. We're going to add all our Masala. The first thing we're going to add is chili powder and I'm going to add two spoons full, one teaspoon of garam masala, one full teaspoon of dhania powder, one full teaspoon of jeera powder, turmeric, just about a quarter spoon. We don't want too much because we've already got turmeric in with the, um, with some of the vegetables. So I'm going to add a little bit of water into my pot. Just so that my spices don't burn. And what happens now is you've created a little bit of gravy in the pot before adding the rest of the ingredients. Add the cauliflower. Then we're going to put the bananas, because these bananas need to cook, they're quite hard. The yams, or madumbas as we know it, can go in now. At this point I'm going to add some salt. I'm going to just put a teaspoon of salt for now, but we are going to taste a little bit later to see if we need more salt in this dish. But definitely I do need more water as I want all the vegetables to cook well and I want a nice gravy to come out of this as well. So I'm going to add more water and put on my lid and let that simmer. I'm now about to add the gem squash. I didn't add it in earlier because gem squash is quite soft and it will cook quite uh, quickly. Give it a stir. Just check that nothing's sticking to the bottom. And nothing is, thank goodness. And I'm going to put the lid on while I prepare the tamarind water. Okay, time.
time to put it into the pot the tamarind mixture into my pot I'm then going to add a little more water these vegetables are very thirsty I'm going to get my pot ready for the sour porridge. For the porridge, I'm going to be chopping up some shallots. Now, when you're making sour porridge, you need to start your sour porridge five days in advance. And the reason for that is you want a fermentation to take place. When that fermentation has occurred, after five days, we use that fermented mealy meal to make our actual porridge. Now I'm going to add some of the fermented um, sour milk mixture into this. And we're going to stir it. I want the shallot flavor to go into this porridge. So I'm not gonna wait to add it only at the end. I'm adding some now. because my porridge is actually done. 